In this lesson, we're going to have a look at events and Python's main loop method. Before we look at events, let's consider a straightforward console application, which is something that's not regarded as an event-driven program. What we have here is something straightforward. The first line allows the user to enter their first name. The second line here allows them to enter their surname. And this line will join their first name with their second name, ensuring there's a space between them. And this line here will simply print hello and whatever their name is. Here we can see the program is executing and you can see the user friendly string, please enter your first name, appears on the console. And I'm now going to type in my name. So I'll simply type in Philip. And when I now press enter, what's going to happen that's going to be entered into my program and it's going to be a string that's bound to this particular variable name here and now the program will respond with please enter your surname what's happened here it's gone to execute this particular line and of course it's waiting now for me to enter my surname so I'll do that so I'll enter Jones and then I'll hit return but before I hit return, what I want to show is what's going to happen. This string Jones will be bound to this particular name here, second name. The program will then go on to execute this line and then execute this line here and print out hello Philip Jones. And these two lines are executed without me doing anything else. One is executed after another so you can see here it says hello Philip Jones so when we consider this computer program here once the program starts it goes through each line of code in turn let's consider this console program here it's a for loop that executes a number of times depending on this range here and if we look within the loop we can see we're going to be printing I printing twice I and printing three times I and of course these three statements will execute over and over depending on the range set here now I'll run this computer program and you can see down here it's printing out the numbers as you would expect now as a programmer or a user of this program I'm sitting here observing those numbers being generated and there's nothing really I can do to stop that generation the console is in full control and the program is executing one line at a time as you would expect now I'm going to run the program again and there you can see it's printing the numbers I'm going to come over here now to this X and I'm going to click on it and it says the program is still running do you wish to kill it so I'll say OK and you can see that the program actually ends now I'm going to run the program one more time and you can see it's printing the numbers I'm going to go to the keyboard and I'm going to hit control C and when I do you can see the program finishes executing and if you look here it says keyboard interrupt other than killing the program when it's running there's very little I can do to interact with this particular program the program dictates the interaction it might ask me for some data for example and as soon as I enter it it then carries on with the rest of the program now a console application are useful for example let's just say I had a file of lots of data and the purpose was to find the average of all of the data in the file well what can happen you fire off the console it goes off and it reads the file it brings in all the data it adds it all up it divides by an appropriate number which is equal to the number of data items and then the average is actually calculated now there the program started and finished and I had no interaction with that as the user of the program I sat there waiting for the result so we can see that a console application really doesn't respond to events in the same way as a graphical user interface responds to events now I wanted to show the console first so we can contrast it with a graphical user interface which I'm going to go on to look at now let's now consider this graphical user interface here it's a window and you can see on the window there are three buttons label button one button two button three now it's a program that really doesn't make any sense it's a nonsense program but what I want to do now is to say well I have three buttons there and I'm the user of the program 
and if I click on one of those buttons what's going to happen well let's click on button 2 here and you can see this label appears which says you clicked button 2 well, let's have another go let's click button 2 again there it says you clicked button 2 let's do something different let's click button 1 and you can see it says you click button 1 let's have a go at clicking button 3 and in fact let's do that three times and you can see it says you click button 3 the three times that I clicked it I'll go back and click button 1 now what I've got here I've got something that's allowing me as the user to interact with the graphical user interface and when I click on a button what is happening is an event is generated called the click event and when I click on button 1 it knows to go and get the piece of code responsible for putting you click button 1 on the form if I click here then what will happen it'll go and get the code that's responsible for putting you click button 3 onto the screen so what we have here is an event driven program of course a button will have associated with it a click event but there are many other widgets that I can put on a form where a button for example is an example of a widget a label is an example of a widget a radio button is an example of a widget now all of these widgets will respond to different kinds of events other events that you can expect to see in a graphical user interface is the mouse move event in other words if the cursor is within the graphical user interface area and you move it you can arrange for the movement of the mouse to fire an event these are all examples of user events the user of the program is firing these events other events a double click event for example as opposed to a click event there are also system events for example at midnight back up all of the files on the server that is not an event that's the responsibility of the user of the program it's automatically tied to the clock on the system so events are very important and they're not part of console applications as we saw what we have with a graphical user interface is a program that is effectively as you can see here waiting for something to happen and in this case is waiting for me as the user to click onto one of the buttons now obviously it's a nonsense program this but it does highlight quite simply what an event is let's consider this graphical user interface here and you can see it contains three buttons consequently there will be three click events associated with these buttons otherwise we wouldn't have them on the form and we saw what they did they didn't do much they just said which button had been clicked now if I've got three buttons it means I'm going to have to have three bits of code responsible for performing the task required by each of the buttons so I'm going to have code to handle an event and you can see I've got three handlers here because one's going to be for button one one's going to be for button two and one's going to be for button three and you can see here I'm drawing a vertical bar and this is a mechanism now this mechanism will decide which one of the codes will handle the events which one of the modules will handle the events and we can see we've got three modules here which in code will be a function or if we write our code in an object orientated way will be a method so let's say now we click on button one well what that's going to do is fire an event this event goes to this mechanism and it will make a decision as to which one of the modules to execute which of the functions to execute and I'm going to say it executes this one here and that will execute and we saw that it said button one was clicked when we run the program a moment ago of course I'm now looking at this graphical user interface as the user now which button will I click next well of course I could click button one again I could click button two or button three there's no obvious order in the way in which the code is going to be executed it depends on the event now compare that to the console application the console application was in control started the program at the beginning and it went through to the end it controlled what was going to be executed next it can be calling functions it can it can be calling methods but the console's in charge here I'm going to click on button 3 so when I do you're going to see that an event occurs 
and this mechanism is going to decide which one of the handlers is going to be executed so I'm going to say it's going to call this handler here and then of course I'm going to for completeness say well let's have a look at clicking on button 2 an event hits the mechanism and the mechanism decides which code it's actually going to execute let's consider the application again here we can see the three buttons and we can now see that I've put code to handle the button 1 click event then I've got code to handle the button 2 click event and finally I've got code to handle a button 3 event and now we can see I've got that vertical mechanism there that I'm going to discuss in a moment now I'm looking at the graphical user interface and I'm going to say well which button shall I click first on this occasion well the answer is I've got a choice of three so I'm going to say I'm going to click button three so an event hits the mechanism the mechanism says well which of these bits of code am I going to call well it calls this one here because this is the code to handle the button 3 click event and of course that code will now execute and it'll put a label on the graphical user interface that will say button 3 was clicked and now I'm going to say I'm going to click button 2 so it will call that handle there and now I'm going to click on button 1 and it's going to call that code there to handle the button one click event and then we go back to the situation whereby the graphical user interface is now sitting there waiting for something to happen and if nothing's happening what's it doing well this mechanism here well we're going to consider what that might be with the next slide the user of this computer program will be aware that they can click on one of three buttons as a programmer I would know that I would need an event handler for each of these buttons and here you can see I'm representing those by these rectangular boxes this one will handle the button one click event this one will handle the button two click event and so on this is the mechanism that makes a decision as to which of these three will be executed and what we're looking at here is waiting for an event to occur now a computer program has to be going through the fetch decode execute cycle it has to be bringing in machine code to execute it can't just stop like we can stop and sit down something is going to be executing so this mechanism here is actually going to have a loop of some kind and that can be shown on the next slide so this diagram is a simplified schematic diagram to represent the mechanism we referred to in the previous slide and here you can see we have three functions three methods called handlers that will handle each of the button clicks now this is going to represent the loop that will continually execute when we're waiting for the user to fire one of the events and I'm going to show this one executing very simply by suggesting that this is going round and round as you can see waiting for an event to occur so here we have the loop going round and it's waiting for the user to do something with respect to the graphical user interface and when they do something an event will be fired there's the event and you can see then we execute this code and then we go back to the loop waiting for the next event to actually take place so let's consider this mechanism here and if we want this loop to be in place when we use Python what we need to do when we write our programs is include this here where we have my window being the window under discussion the one that will have the actual buttons on and this here is going to be the method that effectively creates the loop that we've been considering so for Python to set up this type of mechanism we need to ensure we have the following line of code in our program as we can see from this snippet here we've got here my window full stop main loop so whenever we write a graphical user interface what we can say this is for simple graphical user interface I'm not talking about ones that are multitasking this is for straightforward graphical user interfaces what we're going to need is this here that's going to allow us to use TKinter 
this creates the instance and we can see the instance is called my window and in this area we put the code that will build the graphical user interface for us and will attach all the handlers to all of the events which I haven't covered in the series yet but I will be doing but what we need at the end of all that code is this and you can see this word my window is the name of the window we're creating which is taken from here because this is what created that particular window and we've got this method here main loop so whenever you start to write a graphical user interface you need these three lines here and I'm just showing them in a larger font here so you can easily see you require this to allow you to use TK Inter. this creates the instance of the TK class and this one here creates that loop we've been discussing in this video check out the supporting website for these videos in addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.